To start with today, you're going to be starting in a cross-legged position unless your back would prefer to start off with to start laying down on your back. So if that sounds like a better idea, go ahead and lay down. For class today, I've got a block and a strap. With any of the strap things, you can simply do them without a strap. I'll show you those variations. When it comes to the block, if you're using the roll, rolled up taped up mat or a rolled up towel and taped up just so it doesn't disintegrate, then have that handy. So either seated or laying down on your back, close your eyes. So this is the time to almost drown out all the external stimuli and to shift your awareness inwards, perhaps for the first time today. And while we are using the screen to connect, any time that you can break that connection to not watch the screen, I think that's going to be really great. So as you've been learning, as you've been developing, you will know the names of poses. You will know what a sun salutation is. You don't need to go into that sort of dopamine headspace of always staring at the screen. So I encourage you, any time you can do that, switch off, do so. Start to get your breath moving, your chest and your abdomen. And a lot of yoga classes, they sort of train you to have this rigidity in your abdomen, um, almost from start to finish. I want you to allow the abdomen to move and the chest to move freely. Add in that whisper quality sound, so you start to get that almost muffling of your auditory senses. So here we are working pranayama, a deliberate breath. You're working that sensory withdrawal, that pratyahara, bringing awareness inwards, and then bringing in an extra piece on that path of focus and going for a single point focus. Choose anywhere between your pelvis and your heart. And ideally restrict the size of the area to about the size of the palm of your hand. Now that can be on your back, it can be on your front. And I want you to hone your ability to focus on this area by sending your breath to this area throughout the class. This takes time, patience, and persistence. And it is something that you will become more skillful at the longer you do this. If you've chosen somewhere, you can set your hands there. And this will give you the tactile ability to feel whether you can move your breath into that area. And in essence, this is something that you can do throughout the session. So simply doing a full inhale, a very complete exhale. Use this class and every pose to engage with this spot in a new way. So what does it feel like in side bends, forward bends, back bends, twists? What does it feel like? And we've got like that whole buffet of poses to look forward to. If you're on your back, you're welcome to stay there. If you're seated, go ahead and change the cross in your legs. You're moving into alternate nostril breathing. With this, this can become a very perfunctory exercise where you are counting and there's not much awareness really going on rather than just adhering to a count. Now, yes, the counting and matching of things to different dimensions has a physical benefit, but I want you to move away from an arbitrary count to sensing. So you'll be doing an inhale for as long as you comfortably can holding for as long as is interesting. And it does not matter whether that hold is either greater or less than your inhale and then exhaling until you are empty, pulling the belly in towards the spine. The aim is kind of near the start to the mid to the end of the inhale. You're roughly getting the same volume of air the entire time. So there's no like spike where there's like more air coming in. So like, you know, that'd be <laughs> a little bit much. So the aim is it's a very gradual, very steady flow of air. 
So I'll be inhaling through one side, holding the breath, exhaling through the other, inhale, hold, exhale. Ideally, using your left hand, the index and middle finger are bent in and using the thumb and the ring finger like a pincer. If that's like weird on your hand, do thumb and index finger just so you can get a feel for that alternate nostril. If you're blocked on either side, then you can do that part through the mouth or if everything is really blocked and it's just going to feel a wee bit gross, do the whole thing through the mouth. It's still a valid pranayama. As there is no count, there isn't really any point in me counting you through it or guiding you through it. So simply bring up your left hand, close off your left nostril, exhale through your mouth until you're completely empty, and then begin your inhale through the right side. So it's inhale right, hold, exhale left, inhale left, hold, exhale right. Then repeating that full thing one more time. Close your eyes. Sense the spot you're working on, maintaining a wee bit of awareness there the whole time. But also sense the extent to which you can expand the breath without a count. So if you know that you like to really control a lot of the variables that are going on in your practice, really see if you can strip the count out of the pranayama and focus on the sense of it. If you finish early, so the two rounds, right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right, if you finish early, simply close your eyes and stay with that extra opportunity, a wee bit of downtime in the practice to focus your breathing more. You may find that throughout the pranayama you've been able to sense that area more or at least focus your attention a little bit more. So all really good things to build into your practice. And hopefully you notice like the start of almost all the practices that we do, there is this pranayama and intent setting. It was always there. It's always a core piece of what we do. So if you finish, but you're kind of looking for the next thing, get centered, get steady. I'm assuming you've come to your mat today because you want that time out of the busyness and the unnecessary frills and you're actually wanting to get on your mat. I hope so. Before we get into seated side bend, we're going to do a bit of work for your shoulders. Stand up and grab either your block or your roll. So we're going to be doing some side bend work in a moment. But I want you to get into your shoulders. I want you to switch on your legs a wee bit first. Take the roll or the block to your inner thighs Feet are tracking about hip distance, feet parallel, and hold the thigh at the uppermost part of your thighs. So you've got a wee bit of a squeeze on there. Do a little bit of the action tuck tailbone down, making sure that you're not entering the murky depths of tuck tailbone under, that's a very different thing. So just a wee bit of tuck, a wee bit of squeeze. Telescope your ribs up and then bring your hands onto your low ribs. Exhale, draw the low ribs in. Now I know we said at the start, it's not about the firmness in the abdomen. You can still maintain an abdominal breath without, when we do the shoulder isolations, shearing your chest forwards and back. And especially if you're on the more flexible end of the spectrum, I tend to see people when they move their arms, actually moving their chest and their back rather than developing the strength to move the arm in relation to the ribs, all right? Take your left arm up and your right arm down. Right palm faces back. Exhale, wrap the left shoulder blade so the palm faces back. Deep breath in. Exhale, reach the arms back in space. Pull the low ribs in. Inhale, open the right arm out to the side. Left palm down. Wrap the right shoulder blade. Exhale, reach the arms back. Inhale, bring the arms out to the sides. Left arm goes up. Exhale, reach the arms back. Pull your low ribs in, feet active. Inhale, arms come down to the side. Exhale, right arm up, left arm down, reach the arms back. Inhale, arms out to the side, left arm up, right arm down. Exhale, reach the arms back. Last one, inhale, bring the right arm up, left arm down. Exhale, reach with the arms. Relax your arms, remove the block from the inner thighs. 
Come on down. Come on to all fours, actually. So during this time on all fours, you're going to be doing something called Uddiyana, which if you're newer, you're doing a deep breath in, a big exhale through the mouth, holding your breath and getting the diaphragm to scoop up. Plus, you're going to be doing a wee bit of a kneeling squat action. Knee sensitive, there's a way to do this with less movement. So the Uddiyana looks like this, for those of you that are newer to it. So it's that vacuum lift in the diaphragm. If you just tighten your abdominals, you actually make the ability to do the diaphragm vacuum impossible. It's not going to work. So what you will be doing is during your Uddiyana, pointing the sit bones back, leaning the hips back whilst scooping your chest forwards and then coming back to neutral. Obviously, if you've got knee stuff, focus on articulating the pelvis. The main thing to be considerate of here is if you're tighter in your hips and your lower back, as you drift back, the low back may start to accommodate, the pelvis may start to accommodate that movement backwards. I want you to be very aware of maintaining a neutral lower spine and a very slightly tilted pelvis whilst doing Uddiyana and telescoping your ribs and moving the pelvis back. What fun. Come on to all fours. Wrist sensitive, go ahead and turn your hands out. There's no need for you to overwhelm your wrists so early on. Lift between the shoulders, look forwards, whoever that guy is. Take a deep breath in, exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Hold your breath, scoop the ribs and diaphragm forwards, point your sit bones back and begin to glide your hips back. Knee sensitive, just don't go as far. Inhale, come forwards. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Hold your breath. Telescope the ribs forwards, but lean your pelvis back. So you're not allowing your back to scrunch. Inhale forwards. Feel for a lifting in your sit bones. Do one more. When you're finished with that, go ahead and swing your legs around so you're coming towards seated. I want to show you the stages that we're working through first so that when you're in it, you don't need to feel like you are as adhered to the screen. When working side bending poses, it is important that you're thinking about the positioning of the pelvis. Some forward bends have the pelvis facing forwards, just like warrior one poses, the feet, foot position is different and the pelvis faces forwards. When you're facing the side, this is like optimizing your range for side bend. It's not so easy to side bend here without twisting into the lower back. So it feels more like a warrior two position. The foot does not need to touch the inner thigh. There are some thoughts out there that if your heel is not right in, well, right in there, that bad things happen. Bad things won't happen. Your sit bone is down. Part one is neck release. Part two is actively reaching the arm back, palm pressing back. It's called crowd control, at least I call it that. Then the arm is coming up for chest opener, shoulder blade is down and reaching the arm back. Similar to crowd control, but without the internal rotation, followed by side bend, wrapping the shoulder blade to the underarm. So a few different positions. If you tighten the hamstrings, all of these poses can be done as a side bend so that you can get into all of this without rounding into the lower back or aggravating hamstrings. So choice this time. Send the left leg forwards. Right foot is coming in towards the inner thigh, but opening the knee out to the side. So the angle is either roughly 90 degrees or greater than. Put your left sit bone down. Inhale, bring the left arm up. Lift the left ribs. Exhale, lean over your left thigh, bringing your forearm onto your leg to the inside of the leg. Or if you feel like you're toppling back, take the hand to the outside of the leg. Cross-legged people, go for left hand in line with your left hip. Inhale, reach the right arm towards the back of your mat. So the right hand is hovering above the right hip. Exhale, draw the shoulder blades down, but reach with that right arm, aiming to get a stretch coming into the right side of your neck. Instead of working neck release positions as really like floppy limp poses, your aim is to get a stretch in the neck, but without straining the neck muscles. There's a fine line between extreme passivity but also being so in it that you're getting more tense. So find that place between the two. 
Low back sensitive. If you do a wee bit of a pull with your left hand, regardless of the positioning, you can create a little bit of a lift through the left side ribs. Stage two, turn the right thumb so the thumb points down. Actively spread the palm. Exhale, squeeze your right shoulder blade back and reach the palm back as if you were trying to push a Great Dane away from your yoga practice. Away you go. If your arm is overhead, you have skipped two stages. The arm is lower than your shoulder height and reaching back. Inhale to lengthen the low ribs forward, scooping the breastbone and collarbones to the front of the mat. Exhale, reach the arm bones down and lengthen into the right side of your neck. This side may require a different resting position to get into different parts of the neck. Each part of this is an opportunity to get a little something different. We've moved into the realm of like specific instructions. Your job is to connect to that spot you are working with, even as the conversation shifts to many other areas. Stage three, inhale, reach the right arm straight up. Palm is now in line with the chest, so your hand is facing out. Exhale, draw the shoulder blade down without dropping the arm bone down, and then begin to reach the right arm back, getting into the chest. If possible, the left hand can hold the left side of your head to give you a little bit of extra support. If you've got your props there and it's not quite possible, you can always put your elbow onto a block on top of your leg to affect that chest opener. I know in my own practice, when I work this chest opener, I find it very challenging to get my neck position feeling good without the head support. Stage four is side bend. Inhale, bring the right arm up and over so the palm faces down, but the hand and elbow are higher than the right shoulder. Exhale, wrap right shoulder blade towards the underarm. So thinking if the elbow bone is pointing up, moving the shoulder blade in such a way that the elbow is pointing forwards and then reaching out through that side. Inhale, lift right side low ribs up away from pelvis. Exhale, pull belly muscles in a lot. If your right sit bone is lifting from the mat, are you able to soften enough internally that you actually do the opposite of tuck tailbone? It is actually very slightly sticking your butt out and it may help you get that right sit bone to touch down. Moving with your neck relaxed, inhale to reach with that right arm. Use your left hand on the side of your head and then bring your head up. Change legs. Right leg is going forwards. I'm going to turn just so I can still face you rather than my voice going out the window as much as the garden would appreciate it. So right leg is straight. If you're working cross-legged, your setup is more hand in line with hips. You've got the neck release, all those different things. Leg straight. Inhale to bring the right arm up, lengthening through the right ribs. Exhale, either bring the forearm onto the leg, to the inside of the leg, or to the outside of the leg to give you a bit more support, especially if you feel that the hamstrings are pulling you under and you're falling a wee bit backwards, that hand can be of great assistance. Inhale to reach the left arm towards the back of the mat so the hand is lower than the shoulder and draw the left shoulder blade down. So your hand is hovering above the left hip rather than above the knee. Inhale, lift up to your low front ribs Exhale, allow the right ear to relax towards right shoulder. Reconnect in with that spot that you're working with today. When you connect into that spot and touch into it honestly with what it's going on, what's going on with it right now, you get information that you can react to presently, rather than thinking, well, I navigated that spot yesterday and that's what I did yesterday. Focus on what needs to happen today. And that might be quite different. This is a good thing to work with any injuries. So without sounding like the, a twee new age sentiment, if you do have injuries, they are a way for you to scrutinize your practice and your movements and your unconscious movements outside of practice in a way that you probably haven't before. 
Crowd control. Take the left arm up a little bit more. Turn the thumb to point down. Exhale. Squeeze that left shoulder back as you reach the arm back. Take care your ribs haven't twisted. So this is aiming to get into chest opener in a wee bit of a different way, but also to strengthen the muscles between your shoulder blade and your spine. And for those of you that are interested, it is not a recognized forest yoga official move. It's a Finley Wilson special. You're welcome. Just if you're interested, if you're ever at like a forest yoga quiz night or something and you start writing down stuff that will be branded heresy, there's no such thing as a forest yoga quiz night. Just putting that out there. Third stage, chest opener. Inhale, reach the left arm straight up. Palm now faces forward so the hand is open in line with the chest. Exhale, draw that left shoulder blade down and then begin to reach the arm back. This gets into the pec muscles a little bit more and in a different way. So different to crowd control. If possible, right hand can support the head, maybe even down on the floor, but we've not warmed up side bend that much. Maybe you're using the block on your thigh to provide that support. Once you have it, inhale to lift right side low ribs up away from pelvis so you feel spacious. Exhale, pull belly muscles in, very slightly stick your butt out and draw that left shoulder blade back. Stage four, side bend. Inhale, bring the left arm up and over, palm now faces down. I find it useful to bend the elbow initially in side bends. Exhale, wrap the left shoulder blade towards the underarm so I can get a feel of the elbows changing its location. Inhale, lengthen that side out so you get that opening through left side ribs. You might be able to navigate a wee bit deeper into the side bend. Again, remember it's early. Not in the day, but it's early in the practice. We can do all of that and more later on. Coming up, inhale to reach with your left arm, bringing yourself up with a relaxed neck. Use the right hand on the side of your head and then lift your head up. Give the shoulders any movement that they need to. Bring yourself out of either that straight legged pose or the cross legged pose. You're coming down onto your elbows. This, if you're telling yourself that these are really difficult, really challenging, it's not necessarily any more challenging than dolphin. There's a wee bit of a, a straightening out of it than dolphin, but your shoulders can definitely work it. If it feels like it's a core and back muscle thing that's challenging, then the knees can go down so long as the hips aren't up. It's forearm plank. Come onto your elbows. I've been working these into my practice before I do the forest yoga abdominals to help switch on the smaller support muscles either side of the spine which do not get spoken to in forest yoga at all. All right, not at all. So elbows under shoulders, interlace your fingers, and before you do anything else, inhale, push down into your elbows and lift between your shoulder blades. Look forwards and already begin the action of telescoping your ribs forward. So it means don't drop your head down. If you're in the school of relaxed neck means basically decapitated, I want you to work with an alert posture for your shoulders and neck. Inhale, step your right leg back, so you're getting that full distance, it's not just where your knees are, and then step the other one back alongside it, about hip distance apart. Instead of tucking your tailbone, slightly stick your butt out and lengthen the ribs forwards. You can always do this with the knees down, obviously the angles have to change so the pelvis lowers somewhat. Inhale. Actively press down with your elbows without dropping your head. Exhale, point your sit bones towards your heels and drive your heels towards the back of the mat. If possible, feel for the rib cage telescoping forwards. Shoulders above elbows. If your pelvis is lifting, you're starting to become a dolphin when you should be easily recognized as a plank rather than a water-based mammal. And we're just going to be here. So if you're thinking like, oh, I wonder how long we're going to be here. A while. A while. Smooth out your breathing. Remember, the knees can always go down. 
If you're starting to collapse in your shoulders, press into them more. Spice them up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, set your knees down. Bring yourself up. Take your arms straight forwards. Pull your low ribs in. Aim to do this without any rib shear. Also without any twisting. Exhale, draw your right arm back. Inhale forwards. Exhale, draw your left arm back. Inhale forward. So shoulder blade based. Same deal. This is now working more of a contralateral deal to get the muscles either side of the spine firing up plus flexing your hips. I find them marvelous for stabilizing the abdominals prior to, well, where we're going later, which all will be revealed. Come on to all fours. Knee sensitive, pad your knees as necessary. Wrist sensitive, do wherever you need to, whether that is being on fist or even being on fingertips here. Look forwards, point your sit bones towards the back of the room and feel for not so much a hardening of the abdomen, but the abdomen is not hanging down. Draw the abdomen away from the ground and telescope the ribs forwards. Deep breath in. Exhale, lift right hand and left knee at the same time without letting too much happen to distort the torso. Inhale, lower the hand and knee down. Exhale, lift left hand, right knee. Inhale, lower those. Exhale, lift right hand, left knee. Move slowly and with care. Inhale, set those down. Your arms aren't bending. Exhale, lift, left hand, right knee. If you're doing arm extensions, that's a different thing. This is not that. Inhale, set those down. Exhale, simply lift the hand and lift the opposite knee. Inhale, set those down. Exhale, lift left hand and right knee. Inhale, set that down. Do two more per side. So feeling that the shoulder blade is squeezing back, the knee is lifting, but there's no arm extension or leg extension. That is something you learn somewhere else and not what we are doing right now. That is a different creature altogether. That's like mistaking a cat for a panda, <laughs> which I certainly hope you wouldn't do. All right, when you're done with those two, so left, right, left, right, then bring yourself up to stand. Moving into some standing core work. This is Uddiyana based. So if Uddiyana is new to you, this is a good time to start to get into the nitty gritty of it by repeating and repeating and repeating to see what is happening. So if it still baffles you, you're gonna do a deep breath in, a big exhale, hold your breath and try to inhale. It's also really useful if you look at your own abdominals while you're doing it. So you're thinking like, oh my God, oh my God. This is the one time where we're not in yoga studios where when you do this, it's, well, first off, less weird, and second, less terrifying. So you can look at your own abdomen, brace your hands on your thighs, hands are really high up your thigh bones, and scoop your rib cage up. Chin tucks to help lengthen a little bit through the back, but do this without dropping your head. You can, yeah, like look at your abdomen to see what's happening. Push with your hands to create the back traction, Instead of tucking your tailbone, very slightly lengthen the sit bones back. Deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Hold your breath. Scoop the ribs and diaphragm forwards. If you're new to Uddiyana, try to inhale, but don't let air come in. Intermediates, see if there's a wee bit more air that you can squeeze out of your mouth, and it might allow you a deeper form of Uddiyana. Do another one like that. This time, you can either repeat the bent leg or begin to send this into a bit of a fold. So this is creating a bit of a straight leg back traction, pressing with the hands and scooping the rib cage forward simultaneously. Tighten the hamstrings, you work with the legs as bent as necessary. Two rounds of Uddiyana, go. Holding for as long as is interesting for you, so I'm not giving you a set time limit on that. When you're finished that second round, just bring yourself up, let your breathing go back to deliberate fullness rather than anything that may be a wee bit interrupted because Uddiyana does interrupt your normal breath pattern, obviously. 
The next part is Agni Sara. If you've got the whole Udiana thing down, the diaphragm movement, this is the same thing. Diaphragm will lift on the same breath retention, allowing the diaphragm and the abdominals to relax and then relift, relax and relift. If you've done these for a while, there's a sort of safe, super friendly number of five of these. I challenge you to do like one more than that. Um, so that it's just different than the always five. So Agni, for those of you that are newer to it, looks like this. So that's the slow version. Then there is a version that is faster than that. Brace your hands on your thighs. If you're wrist sensitive and your back isn't happy with that, see what happens when you take the hands down onto the knees. It might allow for a more neutral wrist or consider doing this in horse and don't worry so much about the back traction. It does a wee bit of an automatic tractioning out anyway. So two rounds slow agony, two rounds fast. During acne, press into active feet, point sit bones down. When you get to the two fast ones, simply play with how fast you are willing to go. Sometimes you can go so fast you kind of lose it. When you're done with those two, stand up. So when you're finished, heel toe your feet towards each other, especially if you're in a wide foot position, and then sit down. So we've done a wee bit of core work. Moving into bridge with the roll or the block, taking the roll or the block to the inner thighs. Come on down. Have either, if you're using a block, have it on a medium width. If you're using a roll, have it really close to your pelvis. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears, palms face up, creating that bit of extra space. Tuck the chin to help lengthen the back of the neck. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, press into active feet, tuck tailbone up, squeeze the roll and lift pelvis. So anytime in today's class where you hear me say squeeze the roll or squeeze the block, I'm using that synonymously. So like whichever one you are using, use that. The space between your shoulder blades, inhale to lift that part of your back away from the ground. Exhale, work the inner thighs just enough that you have a wee bit of purchase on the roll or the block, but without seizing and clamping around your pelvis. Following Udiana, reconnect to the spot that you were working on today. Check in with how it feels now. What your breath access is like to that. Take another deep breath and bridge. Exhale, lower down through your shoulders, mid back, low back, and then set your pelvis down. The roll is going to stay at the inner thighs. Take the legs straight up towards the ceiling for abdominals with the roll, focusing on switching on through our legs a wee bit more. Hamstring tight, work with the legs bent, Back sensitive, feet can be down on the ground. The same goes if your hip flexors tend to fire up really quickly during core work. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath, curl the tailbone up, squeeze the roll or the block. Exhale, curl head and shoulders up, underarms lift up towards the ceiling, pull abdomen down. Inhale, lay your head down. Hold your breath, curl tailbone up, squeeze roll or block. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Underarms lift up towards the ceiling, pull belly down. Inhale, lay head down. Hold your breath, 
Curl, tailbone up, squeeze, roll. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Curl, tailbone a second time, squeeze, roll, belly down. Inhale, lay your head down. Hold your breath. Curl, tailbone up, squeeze, roll, or block. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Curl, tailbone up a second time, squeeze, roll, belly down. Inhale, lay your head down. Hold your breath. Curl, tailbone up, squeeze, roll. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Underarms lift up towards the ceiling. Curl, tailbone a second time, squeeze, roll, belly down. Inhale, head down. I know these get really intense, really quick. Hold your breath. Curl your tailbone up. Squeeze the roll. Exhale, lift head and shoulders up. Curl your tailbone a wee bit more. Squeeze the roll. Pull abdomen down. Inhale, head down. Then set your feet down. Remove the roll or the block. Set it to the side. Take yourself. Roll onto your left. Use your arms to bring yourself up from the ground with your neck relaxed. Left hand on the side of the head assists in lifting the head up. For your next pose, the arms are going to be doing two different things. One arm is going to work that sort of wrapped shoulder with the elbow in line with the shoulder, in line pretty much like dolphin. But the other one is going to be in the same sort of 90 degree bend, but in a different position where the hand is going to be down. So one is wrapping in towards the ribs, the other one is wrapping out in front of the ribs for flash prep. Shoulder injured, if you feel like because of the split arm position that one arm is loading too much, I recommend that you switch back to dolphin with both arms doing the same thing and preferably the one with the forearms down uh, for the duration of these. It will make much more sense in your shoulders. Otherwise, come down onto your elbows. Set your left forearm so it is parallel to the sides of your mat. Take the right hand so it is in line with your left elbow but shoulder distance apart. Take the right hand back so it's closer to your right knee. So especially if your knees are under your hips, that's a good base. So have a look at your right arm. Elbow is bent but the elbow is above your wrist. The left forearm palm is down. Inhale, lift between your shoulder blades and then lengthen the back of the neck. So you're not tucking your chin. Exhale, squeeze the elbows towards each other, feeling the left lat muscles switching on, the right side chest muscle switching on, and then tuck your toes, lifting your knees up, stepping the feet mat distance apart. Exhale, pull with the right hand, right elbow moves towards the back of the room, right shoulder blade pulls away from the floor. Press down through the inside of the left wrist, so the thumb part of the wrist. So this is called flash prep and it's a really delicious pose. If your right hand is no longer under your elbow, go ahead and move it back so the hand is under the elbow so you can feel a little bit of your strength is available with that arm. Inhale, set your knees down, sit up. If you can't kneel, do any other sitting position that you can be upright in. Relax the arms down. Shoulder shrugs. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath. Bring your shoulders straight up, straight back. Squeeze them. Exhale. Drag the shoulders down and away from your ears. Inhale. Spread in between the shoulders. Exhale. Squeeze middle bits of shoulder blades towards each other. Drag the shoulders down. Inhale. Spread into the back. Turn the palms to face up. Exhale. Squeeze shoulder blades and elbows towards each other. Pull the shoulders down. Set the right forearm so it is parallel to the sides of the mat. So this poses two sides for the love of it. Left hand starts shoulder distance to the right elbow and then move the left hand back so it's closer to the knees. Now just because you moved your hand closer to the knees doesn't mean when you lift up with your unique proportions that the hand will necessarily be in the right place, especially if your knees are very slightly more under your abdomen than under your pelvis. Inhale, lift up between your shoulder blades. Exhale, squeeze the elbows in towards the midline. Left elbow squeezes in, neck lengthens, and then tuck the toes, lifting the knees up. Inhale, shift your chest back towards your legs. Legs can be bent. Exhale, pull with that left arm. Left elbow is moving towards the back of the mat. Left elbow squeezes in. If you've got a wee bit more bandwidth, left shoulder blade also moves away from the ground. 
Track where your left hand is. Is it under your elbow or is it under your shoulder? Get it under your elbow. Once it's under your elbow, you can move it back. So think, this pose eventually becomes a forearm balance in its own right. If your hand is under your shoulder, you're gonna collapse. If your hand is under your elbow, you're stacking bone above bone and you can transfer weight. So think about it from an engineering point of view. Hand under shoulder, it's all muscle. Hand underneath your elbow, then you're working on that alignment and stacking of the bones. Very different deal. All right, inhale, set your knees down, sit up. Don't panic in case you thought like, oh my God, he said it could be a forearm balance. It can. On that note, you're moving into either dolphin at the wall. If you are no longer needing the wall, which might be some of you, then you're welcome to do this without the wall, but for the love of God, be sensible. If you've got like your glass coffee table there, don't become like the next internet sensation by falling through your glass table. First off, you may not survive. Second, it's not worth it. So you are either going to be coming into dolphin hands clasped, head and neck is relaxed, but the head is not on the floor. So this is not a headstand. Stepping one foot onto the wall and taking the other leg over. Just getting curious, might be here, might be a little bit further, might be a little bit further. You might even be able to play a little bit, he says, not doing it. You might be able to play with the balance by bringing that foot off of the wall. The foot can always fall back in towards the wall. That's like the easiest way to fall out of this. Intermediates, you can flip that around and play with the dimensions of the pose and catch the wall with a foot. So you can start to play with that kick up transition to catch the wall with a foot. As your confidence and flexibility grows, then you're moving towards being slightly more than a leg distance away from the wall. Breath count wise, looking for about five breaths per leg. So in dolphin on the wall, five breaths with one leg over, switching five breaths with the other leg over. If you are no longer using the wall and you're working in the center, explore less kick as you go into it. So come into something. If you just start sitting there thinking, well, this is great. I'm just going to watch Finley do it. Do something. All right. This isn't just sitting around picking your pants out your bum time. So do something. So if you're doing it in the center, your aim is to do less kick. So it's not a big, massive leap. It's seeing if you can do it with as little kick as possible. So you're on your five breath quota. So you might already have finished one side. So especially if you're really like, kicking yourself up into this, like throw the weight into the air, think how much your shoulders have to absorb of that, how strong they have to be in a very compromised position. So it usually means that the chest isn't in its best position, or at least to, to get the balance, it's usually slightly out of it to help navigate the strength part of it. So it's a curious one to learn. Sometimes inversions require more patience than we're willing to give them. Come on to all fours. You're moving into B series with three pose vignettes. That means you'll be doing three poses on one side and three poses on the other. If you're working with wrist or shoulder issues and you're thinking, oh my God, another chaturanga, oh my God, another downward facing dog, you do not need to do them. Frequently in my own practice, my B series will be whatever the three poses are, stepping back and then simply going to the other side without the pomp and ceremony of chaturanga, up dog, down dog. All right, so don't feel like you need to do it just to pass some sort of invisible prerequisite. So from where you are, you can either start from tabletop or press into a very brief down dog. Warrior two, inhale, step your left foot through to your hands, set the right foot parallel to the back of your mat, and then come up. Right side of pelvis is facing the right side of the mat. Left toes are pointing straight forwards, bend into your legs. If you're in some other pose, warrior two, pelvis is side facing, not front facing. Eagle, warrior two. Bring your arms up, deep breath in, 
Exhale, bring the left arm up and over your right, wrapping the arms to find your palms. Inhale, lift the elbows up to about the height of your shoulders. Exhale, draw shoulder blades down. If you know that you normally drop your head onto your arms, for today, purposefully lift the skull and lift the elbows. So it's less rounded in the upper back. Feel how this changes the posture in the upper back away from that sort of rounding, falling forward, sort of kyphotic posture. Take a deep breath and move it to the spot you're working with today. As you do that work, are you able to connect more with this area? Especially now that we're a bit more static <laughs> and definitely less upside down. Reverse warrior, inhale, release the arms. Reach the right arm up, lengthen the right side ribs up away from your pelvis and lean over your right leg. Either brace your hand into your hip crease or bring the hand onto your thigh or the lower leg. Inhale, bring the left arm up. Exhale, wrap left shoulder blade to the underarm. And this is one option for your reverse warrior today. If your trapezius has had enough of arm overhead postures, bring the arm down into neck release. So maybe those muscles could do with more easing and less building. So if you're seeing it as like a weakness on your part, I think being willing to adapt to situations is such a skill rather than a weakness. Now coming up, inhale to reach with that left arm. You're moving into head to ankle prep. So get the shoulders directly above the pelvis first and then stick your butt out and lean into this forward bend. So it's still warrior two base, hands are under the shoulders. Take your right hand either further forwards, so it's in front of your shoulder, especially if you've got SI joint tweaky problems, or take the right hand over to the right if that is less of an issue for you. Left hand is going onto the left inner thigh as close to your pelvis as possible. Exhale, begin to traction your thigh away from your pelvis whilst very slightly drawing your pelvis away from your thigh. So that is possible. Knee sensitive, if your right knee is giving you aggravation here or your back is giving you aggravation, put the right knee down and see if that makes a difference. If it isn't affecting your knee, you don't need to modify it in that way. So I find like if my inner knees are feeling funky, that can be a good option. Inhale, walk your hands towards your left leg, set your right knee down and step back. Don't do chaturanga yet. So please sit back, take your hands so they're alongside you so you look surprised. So don't do chaturanga, up dog, down dog, just sit down. Exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades back. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, make fists with your hands and do a pulling down action as if you're pulling against like stretchy bands overhead. So exhale, pull down with your arms. Inhale, take the arms up, make fists. Exhale, pull down, squeeze those shoulder blades back. All right, come down onto your abdomen. So same deal. So when working the back bends today, it's working, especially if you're newer to forest yoga, not necessarily doing this push, but really getting that overhead pull. So you're switching your lats on and you are more able to articulate into your mid back whilst lifting the skull. And if your low back is sensitive, the arms can simply go further forwards to take the pressure out of the back. So come on down. Some of you will be fine starting with elbows under shoulders. I've got my elbows wider than my shoulders also. Exhale, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, press into your feet. Inhale, pull with your arms. If you're looking down at the screen, go ahead and lift your head. Do this as if somebody was lifting you up by the crown of your head and pull with the arms. For extra back traction, if your feet are pliable, tuck your toes, pull your heels towards the back of the mat. So you feel your knees lift, your thighs might lift a bit. 
You might also feel your pubic bone driving into the ground. All right, inhale, lower down. Oh. Tabletop or downward facing dog. So make the decisions. What is your half salutation gonna look like? Is it gonna be tabletop to preserve your knee, your wrists and shoulders? Or is it gonna be down dog? Warrior two, right foot steps forward, but you are opening to the left side of the mat. So left foot parallel to the side of the mat, hips face the left side of the mat. Bend into your right leg. Eagle arms. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, cross the right arm over the left, wrapping the arms to find your hands. Inhale, lift the elbows, lift the chest. Exhale, draw shoulders and shoulder blades down. Inhale, press into active feet, toes are lifting, toes are spreading. Reconnect into the spot you're working with. Instead of dropping your head, lift your skull, lift the elbows, and breathe in a way that moves into the back of your heart and the back ribs. Reverse warrior. Inhale, lift the left arm up. Lift left ribs, so we've done all those side bends to create space. Exhale, reach over your left leg, bring your hand into your hip, thigh, or lower leg. Inhale, bring the right arm over either into side bend or treat this as a neck release. So maybe you don't need side bends, maybe you got enough side bend earlier on. Whichever pose you are doing, switch deep breathing on as a priority. Head to ankle prep. Inhale, reach with that right arm to bring your torso up. Exhale, stick your butt out and bring the hands down so they're under the shoulders. So it kind of feels like the world's weirdest down dog. Bend into your right leg. SI joint tweaky, left hand just moves forward so you're not um, side bending. Or take the left hand further to the left. Right hand to the right inner thigh assists on traction the wrist out. No, the thigh out. I was thinking about wrists. If you're wrist sensitive on that right side, put your forearm into the hip crease and use your forearm to traction the thigh. That'll allow your right hand to hang down. So my right wrist has been really grumbly this week after a small handstand slip. So I've been strategizing different ways of working with that arm. Inhale, walk your hands towards your right foot, step the foot back, put your roll or your block to your inner thighs on the medium setting. If you're using a roll, it's only really got one setting. Come down onto your abdomen. Take the arms forwards to low cobra position, but have the arms wide enough that your elbows are off of your yoga mat. Exhale, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, squeeze the roll. Inhale, pull with the arms and lift the chest up. Exhale, tuck tailbone more, squeeze the roll, pull more, and then lower your chest down. So thinking elbows are just very slightly off the floor. Inhale, pull with the arms, lift the chest, lift the skull. Exhale, tuck tailbone more, squeeze more, and then lower down. As your flexibility and comfort dictates, maybe the hands are moving a few inches further back. So you have five more to experiment with. This can actually go all the way to hands pretty much in line with your shoulders, but that creates a very different height of creature. So see what feels good. About 60% of your effort is on the exhale. I know it's usually the inhale, or at least like it feels like the interesting bit, but it's that forwards to go down. So you're getting that tractioning out of the back with every lowering. When you're done with your five, go to either tabletop or downward facing dog.
Once you're in either tabletop or down dog, inhale to step your left foot outside your left hand, setting up for extended warrior. Now follow the setup for this. Tuck the right toes, so you're lifting the knee, and then set the right foot parallel to the back of the mat and line up the heel. So left heel in line with the right arch. Left hand is down onto the ground. Inhale, open the right arm out to the side, opening the chest up. Shoulder ground lead, you can do this as crowd control, so turning the palm, seeing if that works better, or even hand on the lower back as you assist in opening the chest towards your left thigh. Inhale, press into your feet, use the vibrancy of your legs to create the support. I find when you come in this way from the ground, the support is much different for the lower back versus when you come in from standing and side bend into it, it always feels really compressed around the lower back. So I like multiple strategies for getting in and out of things. Lounge, lunge, two ways. Set your hands down, set the right knee down, but take the right knee over to the right so your left foot and right foot are roughly hip distance apart. Lower into your hips first, I think the pelvis is coming down. So there are two ways to do this. When my low back and SI joints are feeling problematic, I don't like to twist into my lower back at all. So I do this one so it's very linear, very straight line, where the right shoulder is coming up, but the collarbones face forwards. So it creates this tension line down the front of the abdomen and into the hip. If you're working lounge lounge kind of the regular way, then the right hip is actually twisting down towards the side and it feels more like a side bend. So you can see which one feels good. This will still get into right side low belly. If your right hand is under your shoulder, it's really difficult to navigate the space in that shoulder. It feels better to send it further forward. Just decide whether you're doing chest facing down or chest facing left. Whichever one you are doing, let the hips relax down. Exhale, tuck your tailbone down and squeeze the right sit bone towards the left, creating tension around the buttock muscles, but also a wee bit of tension into right side low belly. If you're doing the pretty straight on one, the right shoulder will come up and yeah, it will twist you a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the other one. Twisting lunge, back your hips up, bring your pelvis over your right knee and then come fully upright. So if you're used to doing this as a longer stance, purposefully shorten your stance here. Longer stances, I find it's much harder for you to navigate where the pelvis ought to be, whereas this 90 degree position, you're a little less restricted. Take your hands onto your left thigh, and then lean forwards and deliberately stick your butt out. So your aim is to feel, can the lower back lengthen or is it rounded? Frequently it's super round, so I want you to scoop it out. Deep breath in, exhale, don't move your pelvis or your lower back, turn your chest to the left, hook the right elbow outside the left knee and then stack the hands. So you're twisting from your mid back rather than from your lower back and your pelvis by dropping the right hip down. So level the pelvis. And if in doubt, stick your butt out. That's a life lesson right there. If you're gonna learn anything from a guy that got famous getting his butt out on camera, it's gonna be if in doubt, stick your butt out. <laughs> this pose is greatly enhanced by an Udiana. By greatly enhanced, if you had dinner before class, it will not be greatly enhanced. It will be a mess. If you didn't have dinner before class, you were sensible. Inhale, release your hands down. Take the roll or the block back to your inner thighs. Repeating the cobra action that we were just working. So you might find that with each round you're able to work a little further back. If possible, your change in this one, this round, is to work with the toes tucked and the sensation of pulling back on the heels. So I can use my feet to pull the leg bones towards the back of the mat whilst tucking tailbone and then I can pull myself away from that. So it creates a very different dynamic. 
Hands are wider than your mat. Exhale, tuck tailbone to heel, squeeze the roll. Inhale, pull with the arms, scoop your chest up. Exhale, lower down, pulling with the arms more. Inhale, pull with the arms, consider pressing your abdomen into the mat to get additional support. Exhale, pull with the arms and lower down. Inhale into abdomen, pull with your arms. Exhale, tuck tailbone more, squeeze roll, pull with the arms and lower. All right, the next thing is a, a rip roaring riot hoot. Once you have lifted, you're gonna take your hands off the floor. I encourage you not to be the person that goes like so high up and is like, oh my God, does it look good? And then takes her hands off the floor and falls down. All right, so find a sensible ambition. Inhale, pull with your arms to lift. Check yourself out and be like, okay, how does that feel? Maybe lifting the hands up really strong, squeeze back on your shoulders, really strong pull back on your feet. And you'll feel it's tough. You might be able to use your hands to give yourself a wee bit more height and almost surprise yourself. Like it can be really like, oh, okay, those are strong now. Deep breath in, exhale, lower down. Okay, that was really tough. Hands on your shoulders, bring yourself up, remove the roll. For the sake of time efficiency, stay in tabletop. Bring your right foot outside your right hand, coming into extended warrior. Tuck the left toes and then flip that left foot down parallel to the back of the mat. Right hand is under the right shoulder. At the minute, your collarbones are probably facing down. Inhale, open the left arm to the left. Turn your chest to face the left side of the mat. So it becomes more postural rather than trying to just squeeze your arm into whatever position feels like it's more open. Almost feel for your arms open out like wings and turn your chest. If necessary, you're welcome to take this into extended warrior variation with the forearm on the thigh if the right hip feels too compressed. But if it feels okay, you can stick with it. Left hand can always come down onto your hip. Lounge, lunge. Inhale, set your hands down. Get the thighs back to being parallel and about hip distance apart. And then lower into the hips for lunge. Unfurl into the head and neck by lifting the skull. Left hand travels forward, so it's out in front of the line of the left shoulder. Right forearm braces the right thigh. Either, well actually both of them start this way. Left shoulder slides up. Either have your chest facing forwards as you work this sort of very straight on version of the pose or pivot the left hip down towards the ground, treating this like a side bend. This one's a wee bit more twisty, a wee bit more side bendy. But I know for me, my SI joints in particular are extremely hypermobile and it prefers this neutral version of the pose. Wherever you are, see if you can persuade that left shoulder to come up towards your left ear Tuck your tailbone down more, and then phenomenally deepen your breath. So you're chasing the sensations via deep breathing, seeing what that does to the spot you're working on. Each pose is a, an invitation to find something new in that pose. Inhale, bring yourself up. Go for pelvis above your left knee. Bring that right foot back so you're going for about 90 degree angles. Start upright so you got feel for like neutral. If your right hip is sitting up, go ahead and bring that down. Hands come onto the thigh. Stick your butt out so you feel like you get that lower back length. Exhale, turn your chest to the right. So you can even go hands free and turn your chest, then hook the elbow. Make a fist with the left hand. Right hand stacks on top, mostly so there's no bend in the wrist, and turn the chest. Take care that your pelvis hasn't swung over to the left. If anything, lean your hips to the right, and if in doubt, stick your butt out. I'm going to get that tattooed on my cheek, my face cheek, clarification. Switch on deep breathing. So this pose, because of the twist in the abdomen and the length you're creating in the lower back, Uddiyana can be a very interesting experience 
because the abdominal pressure is vastly different when you do the Uddiyana diaphragm scoop. Release the abdomen. All right. Instead of doing a half salutation, simply sit down. If you think I can't not do a half salutation, what if I explode? You will be fine. You will be absolutely fine. Where are you going next? There is a danger that the really exciting pose will lead you to be incredibly voyeuristic and just be like, oh, what's happening and not do anything. You will be doing it. If you are not doing like the more challenging thing, then you're still going to be doing a thing, all right? So there is, you will be occupying your time either way. So you're either going to be doing a cross-legged twist. So either simply a cross-legged twist, turning the chest, or classical spinal twist, foot flat, other foot alongside the pelvis or straight, and turning the chest in towards the leg. So those are two twist poses as a seated pose if you are not doing the arm balance. So yeah, there's the exciting one, there's the arm balance. The arm balance is Asta Vakrasana, all right? To do Asta Vakrasana just super quickly, it is a deep twist. If you know that you should be avoiding twists, so low back damage people, this is a, a deeper twist than you might think, and you won't know until you've gone too far, and the pose goes from fine to too far, like that. Okay, so that, hopefully that's not terrifying you straight away. So to do Asta Vakrasana, the leg is squeezing over the arm and the hand is done. The other foot crosses and the aim is to lean forwards and straighten the legs at the same time. So my pelvis is now facing one way and my chest is facing down. So it's twisting. Wrist sensitive, it is possible to do this on the elbow, but you lose that pivot forward. So you very slightly planche into the shoulder of the forearm that is down. Um, which for some of you is fine because it does take the weight out of the wrist. Choices. If you're doing cross-legged spinal twist, you've got about five breaths per side and you're on your own breath with that because this one doesn't require as much instruction. Just think everything is going up the entire time. Arm balance you people, start with your left leg up. So if you're doing this one, do this one. If you're doing the cross-legged twist, start immediately. The left arm comes under the left calf and goes onto the floor. So I think that arm is working like flight, the uh, brain, flash press, working like flash press. The leg is squeezing down, so it's like a Bhujapidasana pose. Right hand is down in line with the left, cross the ankles. I like to do, actually, yeah, I like to do the right leg over the left. Lean forwards, bend the arms and straighten legs. I always like to turn my head just in case I land on my head. <laughs> so you don't break your nose. That'll teach you how to not do a pose by breaking your face. Okay, changing sides. So if you're cross-legged, switch to the other cross-legged twist. If you're doing Astavakra and you're taking the right leg over your right hand, arm, setting the arm down. Left hand is down. I've got a wider than shoulder distance position. Left foot crosses over right, playing with a wee bit of leg extension before leaning into the pose. So that left elbow isn't supporting the rib cage, aiming for the elbow to be above the wrist rather than braced inwards. Eventually, you'll be able to change from one side to the other, not touch down, not think about it, not even a bead of sweat. And I look forward to that day. All right. That's all we've got time for, folks, for that pose. We've still got hundreds more to do in the class. Come on to all fours. The fun is only just beginning. Warrior one, step your left foot forwards. Before you come up, locate your strap. Now, you might not want to use the strap. You might not have a strap. So there's going to be some options here. If you've got it, grab it, bring yourself up. So warrior one's difference, pelvis is facing forwards, shoulders are facing forwards. For the purposes of what we're doing today, instead of having your heel down, flip the heel up. Come down into that left leg and take a wee bend in your right leg. So here is the stages. You are doing warrior one brain cradling. You can either use your hands holding your skull, elbows in, 
pulling the skull upwards and sending the armpits forwards. It feels very much like the eagle arms or the strap I am a big fan of. All right. So the strap goes behind the head and pulling, wrapping the shoulders and pulling upwards on the skull. It is the strangest thing. If you've got your dangly earrings in, it's not going to work well for you. All right. So just if you're piercing your skull, maybe don't do that. So either hold your skull or use the strap. Wherever you are, inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, wrap shoulder blades, elbows traveling in towards each other, tuck tailbone down. So you're not leaning into your lower back. If anything, the breastbone and armpits are lifting up. Inhale, release the arms, take your hands onto your left knee, and then pitch your chest forwards. Straighten the right leg, stick your butt out. Twisting warrior. Exhale, hook your right elbow outside the left knee, make a fist with the right hand, flat palm with the left, and turn your chest to the left. Inhale, drive your right thigh bone up. Exhale, stick your butt out to help lengthen through your lower back. Inhale, set your right knee down, but pause, right? So you're staying in that twist position. So you're going to be navigating a wee bit further. I like to take my left hand and quite literally move ahin out the way. That's all things out of the way. And then sliding that right arm a wee bit further down. Some of you may be able to move a wee bit further still and reach the right hand down. But obviously this has a basis on how long your arms are. And if I was of a female persuasion and endowed with elements of the female form, it, I would also be restricted somewhat. So if you're working a little bit deeper, you can go for the hand clasp version or right hand down, left arm up. A block could be underneath that right hand to give you something to purchase against. Lean your hips to the left. Take care, especially knee sensitive. Has your left knee buckled inwards because of the push of your arm or can you press it back out to the side so it feels like it's pretty linear, like pretty straight up and down. So just be aware as you press that it can start to do that. Inhale, release your hands, step back, do not do downward facing dog. From where you are, inhale, bring your arms up, palms face one another. Bring your shoulder blades up towards your ears. Keep them there. Exhale, squeeze your arms towards the back of your mat. Inhale to relax your arms. All right, now bring the arms up, palms face forwards. Draw your shoulder blades down. Exhale, wrap shoulder blades towards the underarms. Try to move your arms back without losing any of the wrap. Relax the arms down. So wrapping the shoulders is super useful for stabilizing the shoulder joint. For actually navigating into the flexibility and recruiting the muscles, an elevation plus a squeeze on the rhomboid will allow you to direct the arm. So you're going to do a pose called Anahata Asana, chest opener pose or puppy pose. But your difference is going to be that once you're almost in position, inhaling to bring the shoulder blades towards the ears, upper arms squeeze up and the chest is lowering down and the chin is lowering down. So some of you might be forehead, but your chin might be breastbone itself. You will feel the trapezius muscles working. You will feel the muscles between your shoulder blades working, but that isn't a bad thing. We're deliberately making them work. Okay, come on to all fours. It's very different to the thought of like chronic tension. We are deliberately making muscles contract and relax. Knees are underneath the pelvis. Hands come forwards, but don't go as far forwards as you can because we still need to be able to move the shoulder blades into elevated by your ears and down. Inhale, bring your shoulder blades up towards your ears, or rather <laughs> forwards towards your ears. 
squeeze your elbows and arms up towards the ceiling. So it's like the opposite of wrap shoulder. Squeeze the shoulder blades and then send your chin down, your chest down. So you get that active Anahata Asana. You might find forehead down is more comfortable than chin down. You might find even nose down is more comfortable, so long as you're not significantly bearing weight with your nose, which goes without any need for explanation as to why not. <laughs> I certainly hope anyway. Alrighty, inhale, bring yourself up. No need to go to down dog, there's no purpose. You've already done a thing that looks kind of like a down dog. Warrior one, inhale, step your right foot forwards. Left leg is going straight back, feet hip distance, and then bring yourself up. Maybe you're using the strap for this. I'm gonna use the strap this time. Now because your legs are doing different things, but your torso is working very symmetrically, if you wanted to do different arms on this side, you're not gonna lose out. All right, so maybe you wanna do the strap on this side. Either clasp your hands behind your head, exhale, bring the elbows in and pull upwards on the skull, forearm bones going up, or use the strap, aiming for just shy of a straight arm, and then pull upwards on the skull. I really like this one. Wherever you are, inhale, lift your breastbone up. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. Shoulder blades are wrapping in this one because we're doing a slightly different action. It's more about stability than it is about massive back bends at the minute. Inhale, de-strap or de-hand. Bring your hands onto the right thigh and begin to tilt the chest forwards. You'll feel the pelvis is no longer under pressure. Point your butt towards the back of the mat. Twisting warrior stage one. Exhale, hook the elbow only to the outside of the knee and turn the chest to the right. So we're not going for the full arm yet, just the elbow. If you feel like your back heel is extending back and you're getting an Achilles stretch, Go ahead and either move the foot further back or lift so you feel the left heel is above the toes. Uh, I feel like sometimes that can be a bit of a weird one in that back foot. Stay in the pose. Inhale, move your left ribs towards your right knee. Exhale, twist the right ribs up towards the ceiling. So it's the same deal, just a little bit more specific instruction for the twist. Inhale, set your left knee down. So I like to bring myself back to that neutral twist where the stance is shorter. Exhale, use that right hand. Move the abdomen and the ribs around into the twist a wee bit more and then slide the left arm a wee bit deeper. Either coming into this deeper version of the same pose or left arm down, right arm reaches up. You can, if you have a block there, Set the block down, and you may find as soon as you get touched down, you can actually create a different level of opening. The right knee tends to buckle and the inner ankle collapse. Roll the right knee up to the right, but also stick your butt out. If you end up doing one of those things rather than like the five things, then I'll be happy with that one thing. Inhale, release your hands down, sit up. Now, as we did with the arm balance, there are gonna be a couple of stages to this. There's gonna be a more exciting pose, which will require a little bit more awareness of both your limits and your strengths, or there are gonna be some really steady grounded poses that are on the mat, aren't at risk of falling over, I hope, and seeing what happens, because there's still plenty to work with there. You have two versions of bridge. You're gonna do about 10 breaths in this bridge, 10 full slow rounds of breath. So you're gonna choose one of them. You might find that you use, <coughs> pardon me, you might find that you use the strap version initially for like a breath or two, and then suddenly the second one works. And then you're, yeah. So you might find that you're doing two for the price of one. So if you were using the strap, I'm gonna show you what that is. The strap is going around the front of the shins and setting up like a regular bridge. Exhale, pressing into the feet, lifting the hips. 
taking a hold of the straps, pulling to then get greater articulation into the chest. And you might find that that really helps you change your shoulder position and you might be able to reach the arms further down and come back up. So I've got a really good pull with that. You might find that that gives you enough space to lift into bridge, rolling your shoulder blades under. So very different type of opening as you do that. So that is 10 breaths in that creature. It is actually delicious for your shoulders, a really big squeeze on the rhomboids. Intermediates. You can do this on your hands or on your elbows, and you're going to explore the upper back articulation, that lifting of the neck, oh hey, that thing we did in Eagle, oh hey, that thing we did with the strap, against the wall for scorpion preparation. So if you're using the wall, you will be about a shin distance from the wall, coming up, finding that position, allowing your shoulder blades to move down your back, and then lifting the skull towards the wall. The same deal if you're on your elbows, but I recommend you go a wee bit closer to the wall. So it's feeling in the upper back, the shoulder blades drawing back, and then scooping forwards into the upper back and the neck to create them. It's harder than you think because it's your entire body weight going into that part of your back. So make a decision. Bridge people, set the feet up as if you were doing regular bridge, feet underneath your knees, not too close to you. Maybe using the strap, 10 breaths there, or maybe you can grab your ankles. I had to wriggle my upper arms underneath to get that. If you're working at the wall, you want to be about a shin distance from the wall for either the handstand or the forearm balance and aiming to scoop into the chest your flexibility will feel more restricted in forearm balance, but maybe easier to stabilize, right? So if you're doing the forearm balance, I recommend a hand clasp. So I always find that there's less room for maneuver in the upper back when you're working on the elbows and bringing the feet over. Maybe the feet can then lift off of the wall. So that's kind of like your progression step if you're moving into that. Yes, those are super tough. <laughs> so you got maybe four more breaths where you are. Not ever, just right now. All right, whichever pose you are doing, start to bring yourself down. If you're on your back, bring yourself up. Come up from the ground with a relaxed neck and then grab either your roll or your block for a variation on lounge lizard. Uh, this is a variation that I usually teach my yoga for back pain class, but when it comes to low back, oh, delicious. Set your roll or your block up at the back of your mat on the medium setting. Take your left ankle onto the block and line up your left heel, left hip, and left hand in a straight line. The right leg, comes over the top and you'll probably have to move your pelvis so the pelvis faces the side of the room rather than the ceiling. Allow the left shoulder to do that lounge aspect where the left shoulder is coming up and the right leg is coming down. If you've got the legs the wrong way around, the bottom leg is on the roll or the block. The top leg is coming up and over rather than the other way around. If you do the other way around, it'll still create a side bend, but this one gets into the hips a wee bit more. So just see what happens. Put your right hand onto the left side of your abdomen. Focus your breath there. Play with how much you can move that part. So especially if low back or ribs was one of the areas that you chose today, this is a good way to play with what your breath access is like. Now that things are more pliable, I mean, we have twisted, we've side bended, we've forward bended, we've tractioned, we've done vacuums, we've done many things. All right, ease yourself out of that. I prefer like completely rolling onto my butt so I'm not straining my back and then swap that around. I'm turning around so that I can still face you rather than facing out there. 
seeing as it is now raining and miserable. So the bottom leg, the right leg is on the ground. The left leg is coming up and over, lining up the right heel, the right hip, the right hand. Wrist sensitive, if this is like the growly wrist, you know, like I was saying earlier, you can high point your elbow and allow the shoulder to come up. It's a little bit precarious, because obviously the block could fall over and that could be very uncomfortable if you've got a corner in your armpit. But when it comes to not unnecessarily bearing weight into your wrists, it's a good shout. Like I once went, like I fell on some cobbles whilst handstanding. I mean, let's be fair, it's usually whilst handstanding. And I couldn't be on this wrist for six months. Oh, all right. So if you're thinking that you can't do it, you can totally do it. Just like learn to fall in love with dolphin or all dolphins. Inhale, ease yourself up from there. Oh. Swing your legs around. Come down onto your back as if you were going to do bridge for back traction. Feet flat, brace the hands against your thighs. So that push allows your lower back to scoop off of the mat. Do two rounds of Udiyana. When it comes to back traction, some of you will prefer to press your spine down into the mat to create the back traction. Some of you may prefer to allow the back to arc slightly as it will do naturally in the back traction to see what one feels best. Once you've done that second Udiyana, set up for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. So the part where you get to take intentional rest at the end of your practice. So take any movements that feel good, take any props that will feel good, and take rest. Begin to deepen your breath. Come back to that really expansive breath quality. Breathe in a way that deliberately moves your abdomen. Bend your legs, set your feet to the floor. And taking your time, roll to your left and come up towards a comfortable seated position where you are. And 
Once you are up, feel for a lifting up through your lower spine and bring your hands together. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bow forwards. Namaste.